Docker, the go-to tool for containerization. If you're in software engineering, chances are you've heard of Docker or even used it to containerize some of your apps. You may even be using it on a daily basis, but did you ever wonder how many commands Docker actually has? Well, I have. That's why in today's video we will have a look at, hopefully, every top-level Docker command in no particular order whatsoever. But before we start... To change the entire universe, you have to be... All right, now that that is out of the way, let's start off with docker run. Run creates and starts a container from an image in a single command and is probably the most used docker command ever. PS lists running containers with their status and configuration. It's one of the most frequently used commands. Stop gracefully stops a running container by sending a termination signal. Start starts a container that was previously created or stopped. Restart stops and starts a container in one step. Kill instantly stops a container with a sig kill signal. It's the emergency stop button. Pause temporarily suspends all processes in a container. It's like freezing the container in time. Unpause resumes a paused container's processes. Wait blocks until a container stops and returns its exit code, often used in scripts. RM sends a container to the Shadow Realm. Rename changes the name of an existing container. It's handy when Docker decides to name your container something like Epstein Diddy. Update changes resource limits on a running container, such as CPU or memory constraints. Exec runs a command inside a running container. Attach lets you connect to a running container's output and input streams. It's useful when you want to see what a container is doing in real time. Log shows the standard output and standard error output of a container. It's the main debugging tool for running services. Top shows the running processes inside a container, similar to Linux's top. Stats shows real-time performance metrics like CPU, memory, and network usage for containers. It's great for debugging resource issues. Port shows how container ports map to ports on your host system. It helps you verify your exposed services. Create sets up a container but doesn't start it. You use this when you need to configure a container first before running it. Inspect shows detailed JSON metadata for any Docker object. This is what you use when you need to dig into configuration details. Diff shows what files changed inside a container compared to the original image. It's a debugging tool for figuring out unexpected changes. Event streams real-time Docker events like container starts, stops, and restarts. It's often used for monitoring systems. CP copies files between your local machine and a container. This is helpful for grabbing logs or pushing config files. Export saves a container's file system as a tar archive. It ignores layers and just gives you a flat snapshot. Import creates an image from a tar archive. It's the opposite of export and gives you a new base image from raw files. Save exports an image or multiple images to a tar file. You'd use this for backups or transfers. Load imports an image archive created with Docker Save. It's useful for transferring images offline. Images lists available images on your system. It's simple, but something you'll use constantly. History shows the step-by-step -step image layers created during builds. It helps you understand how an image was constructed. Tag assigns a new tag to an image, usually before pushing it. RMI removes images by ID or name. Pull downloads an image from a registry. It's how you get images onto your machine. Push uploads an image to a registry so others can use it. Search looks for images on Docker Hub. It's useful if you hate using a graphical interface. Build is the classic image building command that reads a Docker file and produces an image. It's the one most developers use daily when iterating on an app. BuildX, the modern multi-platform build tool that uses BuildKit to build images for different architectures like ARM and x86. It also supports advanced features like caching, remote builders, and exporting images in multiple formats. Commit saves the current state of a container's file system as a new image. It's basically a quick and dirty way to create images from changes you make manually. Info prints system-level info about the Docker engine, including versions, storage drivers, and running stats. It's useful when diagnosing problems. Version prints version info for both the client and server. Context switches your CLI between different Docker daemon endpoints, such as local, remote, or cloud engines. This is especially useful when you need to point your client at a remote Docker host. Container is the parent command that groups all container operations into one namespace. You use it when you want to run subcommands like container ls or container prune. Image manages your local Docker images and lets you list, inspect, prune, or remove them. It's basically everything related to image housekeeping. System provides system-level utilities for Docker, such as cleaning unused data or showing disk usage. It's the command you use when your machine is running out of space. Network handles virtual networks that containers use to communicate. You can create isolated networks, inspect them, or remove them as needed. Volume manages persistent storage volumes for container data. These are essential when you need data to survive container restarts. Plugin installs or manages Docker engine plugins, which extend Docker's functionality. These can add new volume drivers, logging systems, or authentication methods. Login authenticates your Docker client to a registry like Docker Hub so you can pull or push private images. 
Logout removes that authentication. Compose lets you run multi-container applications defined in a YAML file. It's the easiest way to bring up services like a backend, database, and cache all at once. And that's every single top-level Docker command explained in one go. Now go flex this knowledge before Docker adds even more verbs to learn. And if you want to learn Docker and a lot more backend fundamentals, you should check out Boot.dev, the sponsor of today's video. Boot.dev takes a different, much better approach to teaching backend development. Instead of destroying your posture watching endless 12-hour tutorials, Boot.dev actually makes learning fun. They teach the essentials like Git, SQL, TypeScript, Docker, and Kubernetes, and they also dive into advanced topics such as RabbitMQ and CICD with GitHub Actions. They even show you how to land a job in the industry. Boot.dev also gives you a ton of hands-on projects to build, like a web scraper, a blog aggregator, a bookbot, and even a Pokedex. And if you're worried about outdated content, don't be. Boot.dev updates their courses and adds new material regularly so you stay ahead of the curve. Plus, if you ever get stuck, their AI bear wizard, Boots, jumps in to guide you through your problem instead of just giving you the answer answer outright. You can explore every course for free, but interactive lessons, code help, and progress tracking unlock with membership. So if you want to try it out, head to boot.dev and use my code CodeHead for 25% off your first year. That's CodeHead at boot.dev, link in the description.